The news coming out of the Middle East right now is clear. We all need to be concerned about small electronic devices. In this video, I'm going to talk about broadly what my recommendations are when it comes to survival, emergency preparedness, and utilizing a lot of these small devices, and specifically one step that I think all of us should take today to safeguard against an attack like this striking you or your family. Hey everybody, this is Praxis, and in this video I want to talk about what pretty much every prepping channel is talking about today here on this platform, and that is exploding devices that are being reported over in Lebanon. Started apparently with uh, people's pagers, and then moved on to all sorts of other things, including, it sounds like, uh, solar, pan uh, solar power backup system batteries and a whole lot of other things. And the, what I want to talk about isn't that specific event, uh, although that event is something that I think is really surprising a lot of us, uh, you know, many of us who had been thinking about the idea of cyber attack and hacking, you know, understood the idea that, you know, large systems like, uh, you know, power generation systems could be made to, uh, uh, you know, have issues so that they could potentially explode or, you know, get severely damaged uh, by, you know, set it, changing the settings within the systems. But I don't think there were very many people at all, if anybody, that would think about that on small scale things, you know, electronics. Do I have any of my, you know, I was going to pull out uh, some demo of an electronic as though you've never seen one before. Uh, but I don't think many of us were thinking about the idea of this happening on small scale devices. You know, I think for most of us, what we were thinking is that devices like that could be uh, caused to, you know, to fail, to turn off, to stop working in some kind of a, uh, a massive attack. But the idea of them exploding is something, you know, I think that it surprised a lot of us, uh, you know, certainly myself. So what I want to talk about in this video isn't specifically that, but the idea of depending on things like this, you know, your cell phone, uh, you know, home heating systems that, you know, are, are complicated and use, you know, internet connectivity, things like mini split systems, uh, depending on systems like this for really critical aspects of your life, you know, the food, the water, the shelter kinds of things. Uh, and the idea that if you depend on things, uh, especially complicated things, especially things with, uh, you know, a complicated kind of connectivity that's required for their performance, uh, it's, it's invariably going to lead you to failure, especially in an emergency situation. In fact, the, la the very last video that I did here on my channel was, I think it was like titled Failure, and it's about this very same topic, the idea that if you're in an emergency situ situation, you have to understand that there are going to be things, you know, parts of your preparedness planning that, you know, they, they end up not working, and you have to be, have fallback plans and be able to roll with that. And that, again, is really, really important when you are talking about things that are technological. If you need to navigate from point A to point B, you can't rely just on having a GPS device or just having your phone with maps on your phone. You really need to have fail-safe backup options for things that are really, really important. Now, that doesn't mean you have to have that for everything. You know, if you want to entertain your kids, uh, you might have you know, some home movies or something like that. And I don't think you need to have, like, uh, you know, buy one of those, old, they call like Nickelodeons, where you, like, you, you, in the old days they had, like, it was like a flip book and you, like, crank through it. I'm not saying it's like, you know, you need to have movies for your kids, so you got to have, like, Nickelodeons in your house. Otherwise, you, you're going to be screwed when the, the shit hits a fan. I'm not, not talking about that. But for really critical things, really important things, not like entertainment, but for, again, that, that food, that water, that shelter. Uh, where I decided to set up this video, I'm right in front of my firewood shed. I'm building a deck off of it. I'm going to be storing some tools under here. Tomorrow I should be fill, uh, finishing up that uh, roofing there, which is really nice. We got some rain coming. Uh, but the thing I love about having firewood in a firewood shed uh, and heating my house primarily exclusively with firewood is that it is uh, it's sabotage proof. It is it is hack proof. There's not uh, like anyone that has inserted some sort of like, like a zero day, uh, you know, kill code in my, you know, iron wood stove and they're going to like be able to turn it off someday and keep me from from utilizing that technology a wood stove is really simple it's a box made out of metal you put things that burn into it and you burn them and it creates heat and it's really important to have uh have things like that for critical parts of your preps whether it is you know again food water shelter don't depend on high-tech things don't depend on complicated things you know today we're focusing on things like you know pagers and lithium uh, batteries but anything that is complicated in terms of its design and especially again complicated in terms of 
its need to be interconnected with the, the world and the, you know, the internet in order for it to function, you know, those things are going to be the easiest things to let you down in an emergency. And that said, I don't want this to come off as, you know, I'm suggesting that you should be a Luddite. I have high-tech stuff, uh, you know, all throughout my house. And, um, you know, I, I understand the pros and the cons of that. I have a Mr. Cool air conditioning system, which I installed myself to keep my pantry cool uh, over the next couple of years, not because of today, but you know, just because of my general mindset. I'm looking to you know, come up with some simpler ways of cooling that pantry area. Uh, because of the design of the house, it ended up being kind of surprisingly hot in the pantry, so it was sort of like a, um, you know, something that I added to the design later, putting the air conditioner in there to keep the, uh, the pantry cool. But I am designing some more, uh, you know, uh, geothermal, simple, just like a blower fan kind of options for keeping that area cool. In the meantime, if you have these types of devices littered around your house, and I know you know many of us do, I would highly recommend that you disconnect them from the internet. And I'm not saying everything. I still have my laptop connected to the internet. My phone is connected to the internet because that's the only way that I get cell service out here. There's no cell service through the air, so I have to get it through my, my internet service provider. But oftentimes there are all sorts of things that when you get them, they ask for internet connectivity to uh, change some of the settings. Here's an example here at my house. We have some lithium ion backup systems that you know run with the solar. And the batteries in those are big. If those were utilized a, as some kind of explosive, if you could have the battery the size of a pager blow up and do what it did to a lot of the people, unfortunately, over in Lebanon uh, this morning, um, if you multiplied that by the size of one of these gigantic um, you know, battery backup batteries, my God, I, I, I don't know for sure, but it seems like something like that could blow up the whole house. And uh, systems like that, as I was setting them up, it was required that I connect them to the internet so that I could get in and kind of change the settings uh, on them. What I've decided to do today is to disconnect all of that stuff from the internet. And the easiest way for me to do that was just to go into my router and change the network name and change the password. So uh, all of the devices in the house need to ask for permission to connect back to the internet. And we're only specifically, uh, specifically giving it to the devices that we feel we want to be connected to the internet. And absolutely, I'm keeping the gigantic lithium ion bombs off the, uh, the internet, at least for the time being until things settle down in a couple of decades. So that, that is the action that I'm taking today, but broadly, and this is a message that I have on my channel all the time, don't have your emergency plans depend upon these high-tech interconnected solutions. Even if they don't blow up in your face, figuratively or literally, it's so easy for things like that to fail because of all the complexity and because of their reliance on these you know, complicated networks that you know, many of us have come to rely on. Don't have your survival rely on those things. That's it, and thanks for watching. Hey YouTube preppers, if you enjoyed this video, here's another that I think you might like. But before you click on it, I wanted to take a moment to thank all the people you see on the right hand side of your screen. They help to support all the work that I do here over at patreon.com. If you'd like to join them and get your name added to the list, the link's below.